Welcome back to my channel. Okay, let's get into this one right here. We're going to talk about this movie, 12 Years a Slave. Now, if you've seen my video, the first one, American Slavery Exposed, it was a pretty good video. If you haven't seen it, you probably don't even want to watch this video. You might not understand it, you know, because that video is real extensive. And you might want to go back and watch it before you can watch this one. But, you know, I'll give you a little what we talked about in that video. We was talking about Anthony Johnson, the first black man in the 1600s. I think it was 16. What was it? 1624 or something like that. That ended up coming over to, to Virginia in one of the 13 colonies in one of the first slave colonies and came as an indentured servant. Right. And as they told us, as we read, many of people, no matter if you was white or black, came over as indentured servants on contracts. Right. So we're talking about upwards to hundreds and thousands. Right. Black people and white people coming over here on contracts after the contract was fulfilled. They were given land, they were given cows and whatever by the government. And they started basically their own business. They got their own slaves and they grew tobacco, some marijuana, coffee, uh, whatever was in America. They traded furs, paper, trees, anything. It was getting sold back to Europe. So that's why it was so important that King James started, the, uh, started this big movement and started a company in Virginia. Okay, so you could come over here as a businessman in some instances, but the majority of the people that came over here were just indentured slaves looking for a better life, trying to get the hell out of Europe. And because Europe was pretty much dying, nothing left, no medicine, no food, everything was going bad over there. So um, King James made the Indians a deal over here to set up shop and they would trade stuff with the Indians from Europe and pretty much was it but the but the video is more extensive if you want to go check it out you know and it kind of debunks the fact that black people came over here as these african slaves from the beginning it's pretty much all a lie um it wasn't until the guy anthony johnson went to court and petitioned that one of his slaves be a slave for life and he won the court ruling by the courts i don't know how anybody doesn't know this story because it's been on fox news people done made mad videos about it it's in legal documents. It's in Congress. It's in the law library. Um, it's in the uh, library of Congress. It's just everywhere. Right. And we kind of caught the whole story in a lie about where he came from because we were able to look up his genealogy. His father was Portuguese and his mother was from um, Angola, which Angola didn't exist back then. I don't know why they're calling it Angola. I guess it's because, you know, that's a that's the place that would be called Angola, but that was like 224, 270 something years later. So the Portuguese had already been in Angola for a long time before it was called in Angola. They set up a colony there by way of friending the people who were already there. And you guys got to remember, <laughs> these people just don't come to somebody else's country where it's millions of people at and they just take over. No. They done set up deals and treaties and everything with certain indigenous people on that land. Otherwise, it could never happen. So a lot of people are just dumb to history because they think everything is like a damn cartoon. You know what I'm saying? They think you could just pull out a gun and just kill a million people. They didn't even have guns like that back then. Um, you didn't know the land. You didn't know nothing. A, a hundred people couldn't outdo thousands of thousands of people. So, I mean, all that is in the, 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 the records of the United States, what happened. And what colonizing means it just means that these people set up shop after friending the people that was on the land and they were going to get protection from the people on the land or that tribe or that certain um peoples that was in that area at the time because remember wherever you went it don't matter if it was americas africa pacific islands yes these were tribal indigenous people but you got to remember they were broken up into hundreds and hundreds of tribes right because they didn't want to be all as one why? Because they want to be different. They want to be unique. They want to have different ways of living. They want to believe in um, different beliefs as far as what we would call religion. So they didn't want to be all as one. They want to be unique today because of what's happening um, the past three, four hundred years. Nobody's unique now. Nobody's different. 
nobody can express themselves because all their expression comes from one source. Basically, <laughs> you grow up here in one source, right? Religion is basically one source depending on what region you live in. So that ain't how indigenous people was. And that's why everything was so abundant wherever they went because they wasn't into killing all the animals, chopping down all the trees and just going to war for no reason and making people believe in, you know, one belief or one law or anything like that. They all was unique and different. And that's why you had indigenous people were hundreds of different, different tribes. So go back and watch that show. I mean, that video. You, you, you got to start questioning if black people were from the get go indigenous service servants and got free and got land year after 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 year <laughs> and got slave after. And I'm not trying to say all black people that got free had slaves. Not all white people that came over here as indentured servants. It didn't mean they had slaves. These were people about business. That's what they were about. So if you got slaves, you got to remember somebody just didn't give you a slave back then because you was a certain color, right? You had to pay for that slave. It was maybe like, um, uh, it depends on what they did. They could be like a, a, a machinist. They could be a good cook. They could be an architect. They could be a teacher. They, whatever. They, they could be a farmer coming from somewhere else. So that would determine how much you was going to pay for this slave. And these people were volunteering to come over here. You got to remember, <laughs> when I tell you, look up slave payrolls. These people who were indentured slaves that they call slaves today, they were getting paid. I'm talking about black people. Even black people, they were getting paid. You look them up, slave rolls. I don't care what they try to say, what they are now as far as what, what was happening. They were getting paid. Go look at the Dred Scott case. He was supposedly a slave, but took. he tried to get free because they took him into territory where it was free, where it was free to be free, right? Where, where a slave could be free. So when he got back, when they took him back to the other territory where it was a slave territory, he took it to court and said he should be free because um, he was in a territory that he should be free. Because every state wasn't down with slavery, right? So they they denied him, and I think he went to took it to the Supreme Court. This guy ended up paying ten thousand dollars. Well, they did the equivalent of what he was paying in. He paid ten thousand dollars to take his masters to court. Go read it. See, people are so dumb. I mean, these are the people who teach you history should be able to figure this stuff out. Where does he get ten thousand dollars as this so called? Uh, having to serve slavery for life as an African slave that just came over here as slave as slave as a slave because of his skin. <laughs> How did he get ten thousand dollars? Holy crap! I can't even get ten thousand dollars right now. So the the stories are telling you this don't add up. Is what I'm trying to tell you. And also, there were more, many people who came over here as slaves forever, right? These were criminals. These were people who lost in war and now were POWs. These were the people who were the real slaves, right? And wherever they came from, they had a first name, last name. It was documented as far as it was a criminal. What city? I, I promise you, these people documented everything. Every slave that came to that damn port, you could not come to the United States to any port and bring a slave. Oh, let me, let me tell you first. So depending on what you did, did a slave was anywhere between three hundred to thirty two hundred dollars. Now, keep in mind <laughs> when you take a person like Harriet Tubman stealing slaves out of the South in the Underground Railroad. You imagine how mad those people were. Right. They were pissed. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm taking up for slavery. I'm not trying to do that. But I'm just saying if you pay back then anywhere between three hundred and thirty two hundred for a, a slave. Wow. Man, that's that's a lot of money. So the only people who were doing slavery were people about business. Not all white people was doing slavery. Not all black people were doing slavery. People who was about bit because it was big business back then for the economy. A lot of that stuff was getting shipped back to Europe. A lot of that stuff was here for the Americas and stuff like that. These were people um, about business. But yeah, whenever they brought any slave, they got the manifest at the at the at the port. Who they were, what their last name was. Um, who they was going to, how much they was getting sold for. Sometimes they didn't even have it yet. They had just slave auctions. Um, and what they did, what what type of work they did. Okay. And that's it. Not one person that ever came to that port was just some dude brought from Africa with no name in no country. 
it's, it's, it's ludicrous. People are out of their minds. It didn't work like that. These people were so organized back then. When you look at the records, it's ridiculous. They, they didn't have technology back then. They didn't have computers. Everything was, oh, um, everything was kept on records because records provided settlement, um, treaties, everything, right? Everything was on record, and you had to keep those records. So a lot of this stuff they're telling you is a lie. So 12 years of slave, right? We talk about this dude, Solomon Northup, Northup, whatever his name is, Northup. Um, to me, North Up. How, how would you pronounce it? I, I don't know. So remember, he was captured in a movie from up north during the height of slavery. He was living in New York, living middle class, owned his own home, was a college graduate, and was living in a nice black community with hundreds of other black people in the height of slavery. They still haven't explained to any black people how all these black people were free in the North. They won't tell you in the South. They'll just act like it ne it wasn't going on. But how were all these black people free? It's ludicrous. They, they will tell you that their slave master freedom. That's what they will tell you. Or they were born free or something like that. That's what they will tell you. And they might have been slaves when they came over here. Indentured. You never ever get free if you was coming over here as a slave again and you was a criminal. They didn't let those criminals free. No matter if you was black, white, whatever, or you was a POW of war. You have no papers, no contracts, no nothing. Right? And those were basically your runaway slaves because they were screwed. So he was born in 1808 was an American abolist in a uh, primary author of the memoir, 12 Years a Slave, a Freeborn African American. Remember these names. There was no Afri African American back then um, from New York. He was the son of a free slave. Remember, and a free woman of color. Right? So he was a son of a free slave. So to me, that already tells me his father came over here on an indentured contract. His his his, uh, his mother was a free woman of color, right? Didn't say nothing about she was a free she was a free slave. She was just a free woman of color. See how they mix these up? Free woman of color, African slave. How come they didn't say African woman? They trying to tell you something right there. Um, a farmer and a professional violinist. Um, he had been a landowner. Wow, in Washington County, New York. That's big. A landowner. Remember, back then they wouldn't let basically nobody vote unless they own land. And what that meant was you had to register your land because when the, the voting first started, they wouldn't let nobody, nobody vote unless they register their land and when you register it means you give it away now it can be taxed and this was a big thing during the um jim crow thing a lot of black people didn't want to register the land so they couldn't vote remember register to vote it means your land has to be registered um you have to be going to school and you can't you, you can't have a criminal record. So back then, you could own the land without it being registered, which means you owned it, which means they couldn't tax it. So what's more important, voting or registering your land? Remember, what the people will say now is it's a big deal that you pay taxes or property tax so everything can look beautiful right sidewalks the streets all this stuff back then they didn't really have all that stuff it wasn't no county and city and all that stuff and and now they can now, now, now they can tax your land just like your car if you register your car they tax it you get that little tax every your, your, your sticker on your plate so now they can take your car 
or they can take your land. You don't think they can take your car? <laughs> With the whole video on that if you want to. But they can take your land if you get behind on the taxes. You already know that. They can take it. So when we get into the Jim Crow thing, you'll see and understand why black people and Jim Crow was about white people. They will not tell you that story. Why a lot of black people didn't want to register their land because these was old heads that didn't care about voting. They cared more about their land and they didn't want to pay taxes on their land. They wanted to um, hand it down through the family. Don't worry. Martin Luther King took care of that. He registered all black people <laughs> to vote, which means their land was gone. So where are we at? Um, so he was he, a, a farmer and a professional violinist. He had been a landowner in Washington County, New York. In 1841, he was offered a traveling musician job and went to the D.C. where slavery was legal. There he was drugged and kidnapped into slavery. Y'all got to watch that movie. Um, he was shipped to New Orleans, purchased by a planter and held as a slave for 12 years in the Red River region of Louisiana. Mostly, um, I don't even know what that word says. Talking about some uh, certain county. He remained a slave until he met Samuel Bass, a Canadian work, was it a Canadian working on his plantation who helped get word to New York, where state law provided aid to free New York citizens. Mm, he was a citizen in the height of slavery. Wow, citizens. Well, he, had, he <laughs> citizens who had been kidnapped and sold into slavery. His family and friends enlisted the aid. Of the, the governor of New York, Washington, Hunt, and eventually regained his freedom on uh, January 3rd, 1853. Um, the slave trader in Washington, D.C., James H. I got my dog drinking. Um, Bush, Bish, was arrested and tried, but acquitted because District of Columbia law at the time prohibited. Uh, him as a black man from testifying against white people later in new york state his northern kidnappers were located and charged but the case was tied up in court for two years because of judicial challenges and finally dropped when uh washington dc was found to have j j judicial oh jurisdiction um if dc government did not pursue the case those who had kidnapped and enslaved him received no punishment in his first year of freedom he wrote and published his memoir, 12 Years a Slave. Man, this dude was pretty smart. He lectured on behalf of the abolitionist movement in, if I'm saying the word right, giving more than two dozen speeches throughout the Northeast about his experiences um, to build momentum against slavery. He largely disappeared from the, from the historic records after 1857, although a letter later reported him alive uh, in early 1863, some commentators Thought he had been kidnapped again, but historians believed um, it likely, as he would have been considered too old to bring a to bring a good price. The details of his death have never been documented. Really? I found a guy with genealogy. What? Okay. Um. His memoir was later adopted and produced in 1984 television film. Um, I guess it would let me see i i never heard of this before 18 1984 um and then it came back out in 2013 um it won three academy awards best picture um at the 86th academy award wow <clears throat> so it, it just goes on talking about some some other stuff that really ain't important. Um, is that his house? Yeah, they show his house right here. It's still in New York. It's a it's a historic house. I'm talking about this thing. It's huge. Looks like a mansion. <laughs> they got black people feeling like they was all enslaved. Only, you know, white people was running around during these times. They didn't have nothing. They all was wearing rags and all this stuff. Instead, black people was all well it wasn't slavery in the west so if you went out west black people was just balling especially out there well there wasn't no slavery out there it was a lot of um 
Indians and stuff, but it was Indians everywhere. But there wasn't no slavery over there. It was slavery in the north and the south. But it was just more slavery in the south because that's where all the industry was. All the industry was mostly in the south because everything was mostly based on farming, right? Not just for the people here. It was getting pushed around the world. It was the biggest thing. This was the Americas. Everything that they wish they had over there in Europe, um, Africa, China, it was in the Americas. I'm trying to tell you, I could do a whole video on this about um, what they said. 98% of the fruits and vegetables that's in Africa today came from the Americas. Mm hmm. Yep. They was having medicine over here that start healing the world, food, all this stuff, man. It changed the Americas, changed the world. If it weren't for the Americas, say the Americas, you know, was like Europe when Europe found the Americas. The world might be dead. The world might be dead. This was like the Garden of Eden. And, you know, they try to use this word African-American now. But the fact is, don't they say that white people, everybody originated from Africa? So how do they call just, you know, certain people, no matter where they come from, Africans, right? You'll see a, a dark-skinned Chinese person and say, oh, man, them people African descent. Well, what is white people? Ain't they African descent? <laughs> I don't believe the story that they're telling, but but if we go by their story, they said humans originated in Africa. So wouldn't that make white people African? Okay, I guess you could call them African-European because they migrated to Europe. But you really can't call nobody nothing unless you know where they came from. What exactly, exactly country... Um, they came from if you want to use the country part but what about indigenous people they all were broken up in these different tribes so you got to call them from what tribe they came from you know when, when they when we did a genealogy on Anthony Johnson we went back and looked at his mom and said she came from Angola so she's Angolan she won't be African she'd be Angolan American and his father was Portuguese. Now, we don't know if because the Portuguese have been in that area for a long time. So we don't know if, you know, the Portuguese brought their women over there and she was born over there and she's just Portuguese. But um, his middle name was Edmond, it was, you know, like it's like a Spanish name. And his name was Antonio that he later changed to. Anthony Johnson. And when you go back and look at it, most of the people were dark back in Portugal, back in the time. It ain't the people of Portugal that you see now. These ain't the same people. I mean, there's still a lot of dark people. There, but when we talk about the, the 1600s, it was a lot of black people over there in Portugal. And we won't even talk about that. But So let's get into this. And, you know, it's just a little thing we was talking about Anthony Johnson a minute ago. And how all these black people were free in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s and owning slaves and living rich. All over the United States, whether it was in the West or it was in the North or it was in the South. And some owned slaves and some didn't. But they try to come up with this, this stupid stuff. Again, that they were released from slavery, from the slave master, and that's why they were free. But they try to tell you in school that everything was so racist. Black people didn't have no rights. Black people didn't have this. They, they, it's so bad because they can't vote for white people. Would they vote? I'm, I'm being serious. Would they vote for you? So how is it so bad that you can't vote for people? Who don't like you for real. but Chinese people vote for you. So you're going to so you, you're going to do all this stuff to vote for Chinese people. But with Chinese vo people vote for you, you know, it doesn't make any sense what they're saying. Oh, I can't eat with these people. I'm going to go crazy. What? I'm going to go over there and, and sit in this restaurant because I can't eat what you're cooking. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So you don't like me. You don't want to be around me. You hate me. You don't like the color of my skin. And I'm going to go in there and fight with all my might to be around you 
just to just just to say I did something. You're gonna serve me some of that uh, whatever you, that hamburger. <laughs> like like black people don't know how to cook. Like they didn't have restaurants in the 1800s, 1900s, all that stuff. They had all their own restaurants. Why was it, it? All this stuff is just made up by the government to make black people feel like they need to be a part of something. No, they're trying to take you out of what you're a part of, your people and what you're doing. You, don't, you ain't going to see no Dominicans fighting to get to your restaurant, fighting to be a part of you or Puerto Ricans or Chinese. No, this is what they tell black people to do, to fight to be a part of people who don't like them. I mean, that's just the craziest thing you ever heard. I'm, I'm trying to be serious. And that's why we talk about when black people weren't allowed to vote, which they were. A lot of black, as you can see, this guy right here was allowed to vote. Why? Because he owned his own home, which means he registered his land and all this stuff. Um, well, I don't know if he registered just because he owned it, but he probably did. Everything was on the up and up for all these black dudes, black people in the north. They were all about the system. They really weren't getting treated wrong. They had their own communities, their own stores, their, their, their own trade between each other. They didn't care about what was over there and you got to remember at these times what was sanctioned against black people was sanctioned against jews the irish a lot of white women filipinos indians so none of these people that i just mentioned um i say asians so none of these people i just mentioned was fighting later on to be a part of people that hate them it was just a movement by black people to be a part of this movement of people that didn't want to be around them, didn't want to share with them, but none of these other people was doing it. All you heard was Negroes doing it. Now, you probably had a couple sprinkled in from other people, but it was mostly black people. But I don't think they benefit off of, benefited off of it at the end of the day because I see everybody else in this country head and shoulders over black people. Head and shoulders. That had more. They own more houses, own more businesses, got more money. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Black people wasn't living that bad during slavery. It was, I'm trying to tell you, it was only a few ways you could come over here. And it was as an indentured slave, right? It's kind of like now. The, uh, what do you call it? A work... A work visa, right? They got the work visa and you come over here, right? You got a petitioner and you got the benefit beneficiary and you work for a company and you get paid and then you got to keep documenting through the um, immigration. Did you serve your time with that company? Did you not get in trouble? Everything else. And then they can grant you um, what is uh, a green card. It's the same damn thing. With a work visa. So that's what the indenture thing was too. And we read. And we're going to get into this in a minute. And we're going to read. How all these black people in the south and the north. Owned all these slaves. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of black people. Owned slaves. Owned own thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of land in the south in the north particularly in the south and they was getting paid so check this out and you can look this up just look up black slave owners look it up from 1600 that's anthony johnson <laughs> All the way until slavery was over. Slavery was over. And I'm going to tell you one more time. There was only a few forms of slavery indentured through a contract which anybody could get over here and do. Black, white, Spanish, um, Asian, all these people could do that. And they did that by the tens of thousands every year since slavery started. Second... You can get over here the wrong way if you was a criminal and they sent you over here to the 13 colonies or you was a pow who lost in the war right they were having all kind of damn wars over there in europe so you lost and then you would get sold over here it's money 
That's free. That, that's free money. They're selling you to a colonist, and now the colonist got to pay for you, and you enslaved for the rest of your life. It ain't no contract for you. You're done. You try to leave. They got slave catchers and everything. Just, that's just the way it was. And then the story we just read, guess what? They was doing stuff like that. They were stealing um, people into slavery from the north and selling them in the south. Free people. And it was getting paid. These people was worth a lot of money. I told you what the money was, 300 to $3,200. That's what a slave cost back then. They was getting paid. And if you didn't have no contract... With that um, with that county or whatever like that, th nobody was gonna let you go. So they was doing that. I'm not trying to say it was right because it was wrong. But from what I know, from what I know, it was the North stealing people into slavery and selling them down south. Why? Because they wanted taxes and taxes and taxes and taxes from these slave owners from the North. I mean, yeah, from the South. So they were paying all these taxes on a product and they wanted them to pay taxes on their slave too. And it was like, no. The Confederates was like, no. And that's pretty much what forced the Civil War because they were telling the people up North, we got to go to war, bro. Or they're going to keep stealing people, right? And taking them down South. But it's the it's the gov. They're just going to lie about it. But the big thing is they wanted to stop it not because of slavery. They wanted to stop it because they weren't getting any money. You think Abraham Lincoln didn't own slaves? <laughs> they weren't getting any money, bro. So I believe from what I know, the North was stealing these slaves and taking them down south and selling them. And Harriet Tubman who ran a company where a whole bunch of other people were getting paid for getting these slaves back. And they was running a the game. They was running a, a money game. Remember, the people back then, I mean, bless their heart. <laughs> they, they don't have the, they're not in the information age. They don't have the computers. They don't have the, the, the means of looking up different things like we do today at a drop of a dime. We could look up a state law in Washington. We could look up a state law in Louisiana. We can look at this history here. Then we look up something up in, you know, Angola. Their, their laws, when they formed, everything. Then people didn't have that back then. All they had was contracts. And that's what freed you. That, that's what made you a slave. And that's it. White people was buried over here. Go look at the Irish slave trade. They was brought over here everywhere, really. By the tens of thousands as slaves, thanks to King James. Now indentured, the majority of them came over here as real slaves. The word slave comes from the Slavs, right? Slavs. These are white people with real dark hair in the um. The Moors, who were, who were black, enslaved them for thousands of years. That's how you got all these mixed people in the Middle East. And when that um, empire fell, the mulatto people took over in the Middle East, right? But the majority of them people come from slave masters, their fathers, their grandfathers, their great-great-grandfathers. These people, these Moors in the Middle East, didn't give a damn. They enslaved Christians, all this, until their empire fell to Spain, which I, I don't think it fell. I think they just, you know, the kings over there and the sultans, they just sold those people out. If you understand history, people with no um, with no power who were getting enslaved just can't start taking over <laughs> and, and take over a whole damn empire. It don't work that way, man. These these kingdoms, they plot. Right. These countries, these presidents, they plot on the people um, to keep them in place like today. It, it, back then in Europe, the kings, all they did was scare the hell out of people. Say it's king of France, king of Britain, king of um, w w Spain, the, the king of Germany, whatever. They would scare the shit out of people. And that's how um, 
you was under the king rule because they could protect you. You couldn't protect yourself. So you would have to do what they told you to do. You had to pay taxes, go to church, go to school, do all this stuff, but you're not getting our protection. And then France is going to come over, there, come over there and steal you as a prisoner. <laughs> so, they, I mean, they've been playing these boogeyman games for a long time. It's nothing new. It's a, it's a boogeyman game, and they're all in it together. But you guys, most, most of the fools don't know history. Um, black slaveholding is a hyster historical phenomenon in which has not been fully explored by scholars. Of course not. Graduate students of history are often surprised to learn that some free blacks own slaves. Even historians are frequently s s uh, skeptical until they discover the number of black masters and the number of slaves owned by them. Told you. Um, too many readers. Hold on. Yeah. Too many readers. Slavers. Um, slavery was an institution exclusively utilized by white slave owners. The fact that free black own slaves has been lost in the annals of history yet at one time or another free black slave owners resided in every southern state which uh what's it say enacted slavery you heard that black slave owners were in every state well they, they're saying southern they were they were in the north too that enacted slavery even in northern states, in Louisiana, Maryland, South Carolina, and Virginia, free blacks owned more than 10,000 slaves, according to the federal census in 1838. Now, you might think 10,000 really ain't a lot. And that's only according to the census. That's if they took the census, right? Some people kind of shot away from it. And like I said, some people might think that's a that's not a lot because people might think, oh, man, they brought millions of African slaves over here and blah. You believe in a, a children's story. If you can't find this in the records of Congress, in the records of that county, in that state, you're listening to a fairy tale story that's on TV. Um, e even, even schools, most of it's fairy tales. The schools that they ship your children off to every day. The majority of it is. Many of the black masters in the lower south were large planters who owned scores of slaves and planted large quantities of cotton, rice, and sugar cane. In the 1860s, for example, um, where is this at? Augusta, a free collar planter of St. Landry Parish in Louisiana, owned 70 slaves who worked 500 acres. <laughs> wow, that's a lot, of, a lot of acres of land and produced 100 bales of cotton about 600 miles uh, to the east of Louisiana in the county of Sumter, South Carolina. William Edison, oh, you got to read about this guy. I'm going to say it again. William Edison. William Edison. William Edison. This dude was like the black Bill Gates. This dude was so rich, it wasn't even funny off of slavery. Woo. A free cut. Yeah. William Edison, a free colored. I got to keep changing names. Negro, black, colored, Afro-American, African-American. Nobody else had their name changed in history. That's where they're trying to confuse the people so you don't know what the hell is going on. Why, why would they keep changing the name? It just, if you was African... How come they just won't be African? And like I said, they never brought nobody over here without detailing where they came in Africa. They were real detailed about their records back then. Go check out the slave manifest. Every slave that came over here. I'm not trying to say they had to have a first name and last name, but I'm just saying it told you where they were coming from. And don't tell me about, oh, no, man, they stole from Africa and then they went to Europe. No, bro, this is too much work. We talking about money. It didn't work like that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, William Edison Ellison was a free collar planter, used the labor of 70 slaves to cultivate 100 bales of cotton. In 1861 in South Carolina, Robert Johnson, Collins, and Margaret Mitchell Harris used their slaves to, um, to till the soil um, of the Sati plantation and grew 240,000 pounds of rice in 1849, but the majority of the large collar planters lived in Louisiana. Um, we t <laughs> it's crazy. We, we go back and we look at Louisiana now and talk about the slavery there, and you just had all these black people running around enslaving people and were free. Um in 1860, Madam 
Cap Caprin, um, Richard and her son Pierre Richard Free Mulattoes of um some town in Paris, we're talking about Louisiana, own 160 slaves. Mm. So when we talk about mulatto, back then it's not always what you think it is now. When they talk about mulatto now, they're talking about mixed, like black and white. You could just have a lighter skin color than another so-called black person, and they would put you as mulatto on a census. Because that's what they're looking at right here. They're looking at the census of all these black people that owned all these slaves and their names, blah, blah. I'm trying to tell you, all this stuff was documented in detail. The stuff that you learn in school is just some fairy tale stuff. And most black people should be offended. Um, the joint operation of mother and son used the labor of slaves to produce 115 hogshead hogsheads of sugar in 1859 yet not all of the black masters were planters uh or from the south in fact the city of new york had eight black slave owners who owned 17 slaves in 1830 in short um the institution of black slave owning was widespread stretching as far as north um as far as north what is, as far as north as New York and as far as South Florida, extending westward into Kentucky, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Missouri. Whew. I'm trying to tell you, son, this, the, the cover up on this thing is so crazy. I'm trying to tell you. And trust me, th this is this is what I do right here. This this is my thing right here. <laughs> I stopped doing it, but this is my thing right here. I mean, I just study this thing like it ain't nothing. I mean, I'm not the only one. There are people who put out like hundreds of videos on this stuff. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy what they, they try to tell you on TV today or in school and stuff like that. One may ask, where did these free blacks come? These free black masters come from? Many of them were former slaves, right? Indentured. Like we was talking about, um, who were free. Um, some because of their kinship ties, um, right? Kinship ties to other black people who were free. Um, some was emancipated for their military duty, faithful service, or saving a life. <laughs> Let me tell you something, bro. These people, they, they will tell the truth, but at at the same time, they will tell a lie because remember, they, they got to tell the truth. But at the same time, they're trying to, you know, tell a lie. And what they're trying to tell you is when they served in the military, who is going to serve in the military? Only free people. I told you how much they pay for these slaves. It's a lot of money. No slave master that paid 18, I mean, not 18, uh, 800 to $3,200 for a damn slave is going to let their slave go off to war. It was enough people to go off to war. That was free. In fact, the ones that you pay for, they're not going to go out to war. The ones that came in as lifetime slaves, these is the ones going to war. And they'll never be free. Um, Let me see where we're. Never knew that. But many, but the majority of the black masters never knew the dehumanization of slavery because they had been born of free black parents. Let me, I, I talked about this in a video before. When they, people back then, the majority of them was having eight to 12 children in a lifetime. So you got to remember how many free black people is running around. If you black, go check your census and go see your great grandmother your great great grandmother your great great grandmother or your genealogy these people was having big families so it's <laughs> it's a lot of black people running around on top of all the slaves that came over the um indigenous black slaves there's no law that ever said that black people got brought over here because of their skin color and because they was africans there, there's no law all they said was slavery was a law there's different kinds of slavery don't be dumb. If it was this bad as they tell you, none of these people would be walking around free. They would be getting captured again. That, that That's just how it is. I mean, pe people got to really stop and, and, and think about what they've been told for a minute. I mean, some of the stuff that they read in, you know, like that movie we were just reading about. Oh, 
four years a slave. I mean, that, that's just ridiculous. When you, when, when you hear the story and then you don't question it. Um, so let's look at this. However, the ranks of the slave masters, let me see. The, the ranks of the slave masters, including not only free blacks, but also, um, what's the normal slave? What? I don't know what they're trying to say. In many instances, blacks um, who were not legally emancipated assembled into free black communities and later became slave owners. By and large, the community of black masters came from a diverse background, which included persons of a uh, free and slave status. So when they say free, we already went over this. They was free because they were indentured servants. That's it. He's trying to tell you it was only a few ways to come over to the Americas. They're trying to tell you these dumb stories that don't make no sense because they don't want you to know that black people have family crests all up in Europe. And we can show you. I can make a video on it. They have family crests in Europe and they was free in Europe before the Europeans came to the Americas. Um, once free, the black masters obtained slaves. We, we already know this. You keep coming up with this same stuff. Uh, you, you Come deeper, though. Obtained slaves by various methods. Many of the colored slave owners inherited slaves from black relatives as well as white kinfolk. White kinfolk? Look, man. <laughs> I keep trying to tell you, and I told you in another video, black people and white people was mixing like it was nothing back before the Civil War. Like it was nothing. The racism that they're talking about was not nothing like what they're talking about. White people could be with black people and have children. No? You better go look it up. In the South, in the North, now am I saying every, all black people and white people was mixing? No. They're trying to tell you this hideous story of black slave owners, I mean white slave owners, sleeping um sleeping with African women or African slaves. I'm not trying to say it didn't happen, but I'm just saying the 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 in a way they tell us like like you'll be like, okay, if how come so called African Americans, the whole population, the majority of them don't look like Africans? And they'll tell you, oh man, a white man slept with all these African slaves. So if they told us a story how it was millions and millions and millions of African slaves brought over here that look like the people in Africa today, then that means to wash that out, the white slave master would have to sleep with a whole bunch of these black slaves. And guess what? This thing would be like looking like Dominican Republic, maybe Brazil. Look, 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 like I would say a quarter of the black population, at least, will be looking like, you know, Latin America. It would be looking like Latin America. That's what it would be looking like. Okay, <laughs> these people, their, their explanations for stuff, they could just say stuff and people are like, oh, okay, you, you, you're a historian, you're a doctor. You, you, these people look at people like they're idiots because you won't go back and read nothing or, or think for a second what these people are saying. Now, again, all black people or white people wasn't mixing like that back in the day. I ain't saying that, but they could. So where was we before I got off of this? Um, wait. Let me see. Um, the acquisition of slaves from Afro Americans. What? Now, see, I keep changing the name. It, are, are these like different people? They go from African American to Negro to colored. Wow. The acquisition of slaves from Afro Americans was the result of various factors. Many free blacks bought relatives who were slaves to white masters. Okay, quite often when, when marriages occurred between free blacks and slaves, why, why would I want to marry a slave? <laughs> that I'm just, why would I? That doesn't make any sense. But let, let's keep going. The free spouse attempted to buy the freedom of the slave spouse and the children. Also, marriages between slaves uh, occasionally saw one spouse emancipated while the other remained in bondage. Consequently, the former slave tried to obtain the liberty, uh, the liberty of loved ones in servitude.
Yep, some of these people was in servitude forever who came over here with no contracts and they lost in wars or they was criminals. I'm not trying to say this point this had black people. I'm saying white people, black people, Asian people, any people. You was getting paid, right? They was getting paid over there in Europe if you sold a slave and they was quick to sell these people into slavery who was criminals um, and lost in wars. Some of the slave purchases were caused not by the bond or kinship, but by humanitarianism. Free blacks of benevolent persecution sometimes use their own money, um, their own money to purchase slaves with the intent on emancipating them. However, many black masters did not intend. Um, what does this say? I don't know what this is. Their slaves viewed and they pretty much saying they they wasn't using their slaves as slaves they was trying to they was trying to release them um let me see free blacks not only used the labor of slaves to till the soil of the farms and plantations but also purchased slaves to work in their business as skilled and unskilled laborers others um bought slaves to be hired out these black masters hired black masters hired out their slaves to non-white uh slave owners and appointed what appropriated uh, the proceeds the proceeds um from the labor of the slaves to help support themselves whatever the reason may have been to stimulate free blacks to acquire slave property wow the system of american slavery was a universal institution in which even afro-americans became slave owners and occasionally ascended to the ranks of large um slave owning planters because of history of black slave holding has been uh, almost ignored by scholars. The literature on the uh, slave holdings of free blacks is lacking. Most of the studies examining black slave on uh, slave owning are written in the form of articles, although numerous other works mention the existence of black uh, masters. So far, as the author is aware, the subject of black slave owning uh, slave holding has not been explored on a general or a statewide level in a mono, uh, monograph such studies are needed in its uh and it is hoped that this book will so far as south carolina is, is uh concerned supply this needed let me see although south carolina may not have been the typical southern state where free blacks owned slaves it provided the unique settling of being the bridge between the upper and the deeper south thus uh, embracing elements of both societies in the palmetto state there were uh, blacks who owned scores of slaves in large tracts of land like the black slave owners in louisiana primarily however um, south carolina's black masters were small slaveholders who owned one or two slaves um like the black slave owners of maryland and virginia no i think it says unlike unlike <laughs> not virginia it was it, they were getting it on in Virginia. Many of these small slave uh, holders owned family members who could not be emancipated because of the state legislation prohibited private. Um, uh, what, what did I say? The free slaves left. I don't even know what this is. They're talking about they they couldn't do it because it's a private thing, so the state couldn't even intervene, you know, in taking them out of slavery. You know, in I think we talked about that before, and this was because of the, the black guy, Anthony Johnson, in the last video, remember, he went to the court. It was no such thing as lifetime slavery, but when he went to the court, he petitioned that this guy be enslaved for the rest of his life, and he lost at first, and then he went back and appealed it, and then the court ruled in his favor, so the guy, John Castle, became a slave for life. Now, that was more of, you know, a state thing. And stuff like that but they can go back and look at that any person in that state they can go back and look at it and be like yeah i want to do what he did and you know the court can rule be like oh yeah y'all rule for this on this day blah 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 and that's how things work in the united states they always do that um when they go to court so they they was they they started doing this all over america right to and, and even indentured slaves right they they will keep them longer than their contract or forever you know, a lot of people, even indentured slaves were getting tricked to come over here and they never got free. 
I never got free. Hmm. What's it say? The book is a study of black slave owners who were diverse in background and character. Many of the black slave owners in South Carolina were former slaves who rose from the um, shackles of bondage to the ranks of slave masters. Remember that. They, they want you to think that these people just came over here as no good African slaves that were stole from the coast of Africa. <laughs> what is this, the American dream? And rose to prominence, right? And became slave masters, got hundreds of acres of land, got their own slaves. You got to remember, it was black people in political positions in those times, in the 1800s. In the 1700s, it was black people in state political positions at those times. They weren't just black slave owners. They were merchants. They were all kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that rose. Let me see. Shackles of bondage, bondage to the ranks of slave masters. Now, again, this is what you got to question. I, I want to keep stopping. But if you was a real slave what in a right your right mind would you ever want to enslave anybody else? If this thing was so harsh, it was torturous, it was the worst thing of all time. Why would you want to do it to somebody else? That doesn't make any sense. Because they're not telling you. Most of these people, even black people, um, and white people were enslaving indentured servants, right? I'm not trying to say all of them that came over, because remember, some of them, some people didn't want to deal with these criminals that came over here or, um, or POWs that lost in war. You'd rather just get an indentured servant, right? Because if you get one of those dudes that was a POW or a criminal, guess what? They're going to be disobedient. They don't really have no skills. Because I told you, they were getting all these people, they were buying slaves based on their skills. Could you sew? Could you cook? Could you farm? Could you, um, you, 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 you could um, operate a machine, whatever. That's what you wanted. You didn't want nobody, uh, you wanted a craftsman. You didn't want somebody that was unskilled, they didn't know what the hell they was doing. You got people that was coming over who was farmers already in other, uh, other countries. You wanted these type of people. You didn't want those other people because guess what? They don't know what the hell they're doing. They're going to be disobedient. You don't know, you know, it's all messed up in the head. And the biggest thing is they're going to run away. Most of them is going to run away. That's why you got all these runaway slaves that you saw. Some of them were indenture servants that came over here on the contract and they try to keep them. So they hauled ass. And a lot of them was trying to get to the north where it was, where it was more free. Um, what was it? Still others were one or two generations removed from slavery and their parents and grandparents were slave masters who passed their human um, chattel from one parent to the child. Yet the ranks of the color masters were not all from the elite class of black society. <laughs> elite black. Yeah, that's what they're trying to take. Not all, but a lot of them were elite black people in society. They were rich. And these people, a lot of these people still around. These people is still around. There's black people who you will never know in this country who has billions of dollars who come from this stuff. And they will never tell, be a part of this story because they don't want to tell you they didn't come from Africa. And they came from Europe. I done looked all these people up. A lot of these celebrities. I ain't going to put their names out here. But genealogy is a mother. That's all I can tell you. Um, and like I said in my last video, all these celebrities out here who fight for this black power ain't who they say they is. Most of them out here want, want to fight for these black rights and this black power and that stuff because they always want you to feel oppressed. Because they never want it to stop because they never want you to find out the true history and where they come from. Um... In, in the black class society in Palmetto State in the Palmetto State free blacks who worked as dra draymen, stable keepers and washerwomen acquired the money to purchase slaves within the community of the what, within the community of slaveholders there were free blacks who bought slaves um, for humanitarian reasons and broke the laws of South Carolina to maintain the freedom they granted their slaves um, yet black 
slaveholding in South Carolina was primarily a commercial venture in the attitude and actions of colored masters appeared to be similar to those of the white slave owners. In essence, free black masters embraced many of the attitudes that the, the white community even while they remained um, on the fringe of, of, of the society. So that's pretty much it right here, man. Um, I don't really need to go no further. You, you can look this up. Just look up um, black slave owners. And it's thousands of articles on this, hundreds of books and stuff like that. And the sources of this stuff goes into detail in these county records, in the state records, in the Congress records, all this stuff, man. There's no fairy tale. It's no fairy tale. <laughs> like I tried to tell you before, the majority of these black people that came over here did not come from Africa. They came from Europe. I done seen I done seen it with my own eyes. On the slave manifest, I done seen people make all these videos on it. It's all made up. It's all made up. And you you, you gotta ask yourself, okay. Why does this keep getting pushed year after year? Okay, it's over. If the, the story that they say happened, it's over. But they keep poking at black people with race racism all the time. They keep playing the, um, what's that movie called? The slave movie? They play that like every Christmas. Um, what's the name of that? Um, what were they beating the dude on the back of that post? Oh my goodness. Anyway, that guy got sued. Remember, he got sued in court for making that movie because at first he came out with the, the the book and then he came out with the movie, but he ended up getting sued by a white man because a white man only made a, the, a book about that, about the slavery on the coast of Africa between, slave, uh, between Af Africans. It wasn't about a story about them bringing African slaves to America. What is that movie called? Oh my goodness. We watched that movie on, on the holidays every damn year forever. Roots, yeah. So the, guy, so the guy who made that movie, and like I said, actually made a book at first. And then they made a movie. He got sued in court. He had to pay the white guy a whole bunch of money for lying about the story. <laughs> it wasn't a true story because the whole book would remember. He stole the story and rewrote it and said it was a true story. So again, the white man sued him in court. That was a big law case. Law, that was a big lawsuit if you want to look that up. That's in the records. That's in... Come on. But they still play the movie like it's like it's, it really happened. I mean, yes, yeah, slavery happened, but I'm just saying a lot of this stuff ain't true. And I don't, you know, I don't looked up a lot of these celebrities and genealogy and watch them go right back to Europe, right back to Europe. <laughs> People's going right back to Europe. I ain't gonna name no names because I don't want to get into it right now, or if I'm gonna do it. But it's just nonsense, man. It's just nonsense. I ain't talking about Europe from the 1800s. We're, we're talking about bloodlines that go back to the 1600s. These black celebrities. And, you know, a lot of times if you read their biography, they'll tell you. They'll tell you. But this is, people got to understand, this is the world of commerce. So any story can be made up in the world of commerce. The world of commerce is fake. It's not real. It's fake. Everything about it is just about business. So when you walk out your door... That's the world of commerce. People people don't understand that. And, you know, they don't have to tell you. Your state officials, your government, your presidents, they don't have to tell you this stuff. Why? Because it's already there for you to look at. <laughs> you could look up all this stuff. I tried to tell you before. This ain't like back in the 1700s, 1600s, 1800s where they don't have technology. You can find all this stuff out at a drop of a dime. You can go right to any records in the Congress, in the Senate, any history, and look it up. So they don't have to exactly tell you the truth. It's already public record. So some dummy can come along in the world of commerce and make a movie called Roots. And guess what? It's just for entertainment. It's not nothing real. As far as the, 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 the real story of what happened. Yes, slavery did happen. But they don't have to tell you the truth. It's your duty to know the truth. People don't know, want to know the truth. Because it hurts. Well, I'll tell you before. A lie is beautiful. It feels good. 
The truth is ugly. It don't make you feel good. It makes you feel uncomfortable. So people run around believing a lie, right? So they can feel good. They can feel warm inside. That's basically what's happening. You, people don't want to hold other people accountable who has lied right to their face. But you got to remember these people ain't your family. Just because they're the same skin color, that don't mean they're your family. Family is first. A lot of people forgot that. When you go outside this country, people who live in these third world countries are so tight with their family. But when you come to the United States, the people have been here a long time, the families hate each other. So you can, so you can just believe some fool on TV saying some nonsense or somebody that you never met is telling you who your family is without even you going back and look. Somebody tell you, man, I can swab your mouth, man, and tell you what three regions you was in in the 1500s. <laughs> but they won't tell you, hey, man, I'm going to go look up your genealogy and tell you where you're from. They won't tell you that. These people out here trying to make money. You can't make no money based on the truth. Look at look, look at these people and like you know when we do these NBA videos, the Gilbert Arenas, the Shannon Sharps, all these people, the Nick Wrights, they making money off of a lie, right? They making money off a damn lie. Millions, and that's how this whole thing is ran. People making money off of lies, and it's not their duty to babysit you and tell you the truth in the world of commerce. It ain't their duty. It's your duty. And like I said, I'm not trying to offend nobody. And, and you know, but I'm telling you, like I told you last time, I didn't know who the hell I was before I did my genealogy. I didn't know shit. And then when I started doing mad people genealogy, I was like, man, this thing's crazy. And I really start reading behind everything. The real laws, the, the real history, all this stuff. People don't want to they, they don't want to believe nothing else because it makes them feel uncomfortable that the people that's overseeing them done lie to them. They don't. And guess what they're going to do after that when they know that they know the truth. They're going to they're going to feel uncomfortable living now. They want to tell somebody else, but they can't really explain it. That's why. Well, just keep living a lie.